Gird your loins and light your lamps and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Today the Church proposes this Gospel reading to call our attention to the need to be permanently in God's grace, which implies confession as soon as possible if one has committed a mortal sin, but it also implies repenting immediately of what one has done wrong and not only for fear of hell, but for having offended God who loves us. In the first reading of the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, we have heard a plea of the Apostle to reconciliation. Moreover, St. Paul says that what Christ has come to do is nothing more than the work the great work of reconciliation, and what he has instituted is the ministry of reconciliation. He ends his fragment of the letter to the Corinthians, saying, In the name of Christ we ask you to be reconciled to God. But who benefits from it? Does our reconciliation benefit God or does it benefit us? Of course, the one who is benefited from it is us for the present life. In order to have peace, to be at peace is the true synonym of happiness. And for the future life, the gospel speaks about that. We don't know the day nor the hour. Jesus gives an example. The owner of the house doesn't know when the thief will come. We don't know the day nor the hour. Again, we live in a turmoil of contagions. It can happen to you tomorrow, now, today. It may have no serious consequences or it may have consequences that leads you to death. We don't know the day or the hour. Reconciliation with God, being at peace with the Lord, repented of our faults will open for us by divine mercy the gates of heaven it's not that reconciliation gives you the right to heaven heaven is a gift but reconciliation allows you to receive that gift if you're in mortal sin then god who has come to reconcile you with himself he cannot save you because you reject salvation that is why I again make my own St. Paul's words to the Corinthians. In the name of Christ, we ask you, be reconciled with God, with repentance. Above all, a sincere repentance, sorrow of heart for having offended him, for having offended your neighbor with repentance and also with confession. It would be necessary to make easier the access to the sacraments of confession, which many times is complicated, but at least when it's possible, let us do it. Repentance and confession, it benefits us to be reconciled with God. The peace we receive when we are in grace is the authentic and only happiness. Let's give thanks to God for 
He has given us this great gift. Let us take advantage of it. Let us not let this opportunity pass by in vain. Amen.